Welcome to the Quantum Field Theory Basics series, your guide to the secret theory at the core of physics. We're going to start with a discussion of the other theories in physics that you may have already studied. We're going to show how all those theories failed, and it left quantum field theory as the last theory standing. Yes, this video is going negative by criticizing all the other forms of physics. The hope is that this will help your motivation in learning quantum field theory, because it's not an easy subject. People and the media tend to like things that are easy to understand. That's why the media doesn't say much about quantum field theory. And that's why I call it the secret theory at the core of physics. It's the theory whose predictions are being verified by experiment. But the media prefers to cover things like string theory or the multiverse that have made no verified predictions. The fact is, other forms of physics have led to predictions that are contradicted by experiment. That's the polite way of saying they are wrong. Besides being wrong, other forms of physics can be unsatisfying. By that I mean that they have a limited range of application and are useless for explaining many important observations. Let's begin with the first physics most of us learn, Newton's physics. It has a central role in our knowledge of science. Newton's physics is extremely useful and that success often makes people forget about its big problems. When our science teacher tells us about Newton's famous laws of physics, she usually glosses over the definition of an object. That's because when you look closely, the real world doesn't contain Newton's objects. Newton's world is mathematical, like this animation of a billiard ball being struck by a cue stick. The imaginary ball keeps its perfectly round shape as it moves off without friction. Newton's laws allow you to find the imaginary object's position and acceleration. In the real world, there are no rigid objects that obey Newton's laws. For instance, look at what happens to a baseball when it's struck by a bat. With high-speed photography, you see that it doesn't keep its round shape. It deforms dramatically. Newton's laws don't work because real-world objects don't have a defined shape or position. They're more like water balloons. But wait, you say. Perhaps rigid objects could exist if they were just very, very small. That idea was investigated in the early 1900s when the electron was discovered. We were still thinking of electrons as little rigid balls. Unfortunately, physicists ran into big problems from the electric field around the electron. As you imagine the electron smaller and smaller, the field gets very, very strong. Since the field contains energy, the energy around the electron becomes greater and greater. Early physicists calculated that the energy would be infinite if the electron size was zero. If the size was not zero, then you get the ugly position of an electron having a structure, which is not observed. What was observed is that electrons have a wave nature. This mess was finally resolved when quantum field theory came along. So the world can't contain rigid objects like Newton imagined. Newton's physics also breaks from common sense. It doesn't have a direction of time in it. With Newton's physics, everything works the same in reverse as going forward. There's no reason for an egg not to unbreak itself. This problem is solved with quantum field theory, which does have an arrow of time. Newton's theory also has problems with light, which was well described by Faraday and Maxwell in the 1800s. Their description used fields instead of objects. You could say that Newton's theory is unsatisfying when it comes to light. 
Quantum field theory provides a single way of describing matter and light. I'm not going to beat Newton's physics anymore. It's extremely useful and everyone should learn it. Let's go on to another useful theory, Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism. Maxwell's wildly successful theory is basic to the electronics industry, and almost every engineer learns it in college. It doesn't suffer from Newton's problems with objects because it's a field theory. Also, it doesn't contradict special relativity. In fact, it predicts special relativity. Its problems occur with the quantum nature of the world. This was first demonstrated with black body radiation. That's the radiation inside a container in thermal equilibrium, like an oven used for cooking. Maxwell's theory predicts that an oven will never heat up. Yes, it predicts that you can't bake bread. The resolution of that paradox required quantum ideas which is what Max Planck first used in 1900. His explanation of black body radiation started the quantum physics revolution. Another problem is that Maxwell's theory treats the charge density as a classical field instead of a quantum field. That has problems whenever the charges start demonstrating quantum effects. The big example is atoms. Maxwell's theory predicts that atoms will not exist. The electrons will just spiral into the nucleus. <laughs> now let's move on to quantum mechanics, which is often taught to undergraduates before quantum field theory. That's probably because it was invented before quantum field theory in the 1920s. Quantum mechanics is a kind of hybrid that still has particles but treats electromagnetism as a field some of the time and as particles other times. It had early success with predicting the spectral lines of hydrogen and the magnetic moment of the electron. Later, better measurements showed that these predictions were wrong. So you could say that the theory was discredited by experiment, but in reality quantum mechanics is still quite useful. It's an approximation, just like Newton's mechanics is an approximation. What I want to show is that the whole approach of quantum mechanics cannot be reconciled with relativity. Einstein's relativity is one of the bedrocks of physics because extremely precise measurements have confirmed it. For this section, I'm going to use typical mathematics that you get in quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. Some of you will be able to follow along. The rest can use this section to see the type of math used in quantum physics. The fundamental problem is that particle-based theories such as quantum mechanics all allow travel at speeds faster than light. This is a byproduct of the requirement that the particles have positive energies. If negative energies were allowed, then the conservation of energy principle could be broken and the world would be completely different from what we observe. In quantum mechanics, you may remember the spreading of the wave packet. It says that if you localize a particle in a region of space and then let it go, the wave packet for the particle will spread with time. The mathematics for this phenomenon is given by this expression. This is standard quantum mechanics notation. It shows how to calculate the overlap between two vectors in a Hilbert space. It gives the amplitude to find the particle at location x, given that it started at the origin. The h in the expression is the Hamiltonian, which is the energy of the particle in quantum mechanics. It's the thing that must be positive. You may remember from your beginning physics class that h was p squared over 2m in Newton's physics. We don't actually care what particular form h has, just that it's positive. The problem with quantum mechanics is that the expression will always allow faster than light travel. 
because you can never drive the expression to zero without using negative energies. The wave packet will always leak out faster than the speed of light. I'm not going to use a video to prove that statement mathematically. I'll put links to the proof in the section below. The upshot is that particles always have a non-zero probability of being found anywhere in the universe, and Einstein's theory of relativity is always violated. Quantum mechanics always conflicts with relativity. Quantum field theory solves this problem because it allows negative frequencies while keeping energies positive. So the answer to our question, why does quantum field theory exist, is that it's the only theory left that isn't contradicted by experiment. It took humans a long time to figure this out. It's a complicated theory, but very rewarding. That's because it describes a much richer set of observations than any other theory. In the next video, I'll show how all the other theories are okay after all. They're just limiting cases of quantum field theory.